Good evening, everyone, and welcome, welcome to the webinar. We have uh, Captain S. B. Tyagi, he is the founder and chairman of Indian Council of Industrial Safety and Security. On behalf of ICI SSF and CROPSI, Climate Resilient Observing System Promotion Council, I welcome our panelists and participants to this webinar. This webinar on a, is on a very, very emerging topic that is drones, strategic edge in war against COVID-19. And we have two very eminent and active panelists who are performer on ground. We have Mr. Anil Dhawan, who has had good experience of Indian security as well as the foreign security industry and is currently involved in operationalizing the innovative use of drones in the Indian private and security, government, and even war against the COVID. He is a tech-savvy person, and he is adding value to this complete war against COVID through his innovative ideas. Second young person we have is Dilpreet Singh, currently works as Vice President of Operations for IIO Technologies Private Limited and Indian Drone Company. And he is actively involved in various technologies involved in the use of drone and anti-drone techniques in the Indian system. We would like to start with Mr. Anil Dhawan. After his presentation, we will have Mr. Dilpreet. Then I'll request participants to post their questions in the chat box. And after the presentations, the question and answers will be taken. And then we'll request Captain Tyagi and other eminent participants to have their views. So this is a broad layout. I'll invite Mr. Anil Dhawan for his delivery, please. Thank you. Uh, good evening, all the participants. I think uh, it may not be wrong to say in the current scenario, uh, which is so alarming, that the topic as such explained by Karan Srivastava wherein we are talking of fighting corona and using technology, no doubt is very encouraging. I mean, encouraging it even on a day-to-day -day basis. I, that's where I mean to say that getting a topic to speak and also with colleagues, not only to tell them, but also to learn from them. So at the outset, I would like to I extend my thanks to the uh, to Mr. S. B. Tyagi, who has been the founder and and the uh, chairperson of ICISS, and Colonel Sanjay Shrivastava, chairperson of CROPC, uh, for the initiative they have taken and brought in this topic uh, for the industry. What I intend to do in the next few days, and I'm very conscious from the point of the time we have, and we have a fellow speaker also, I don't want to uh, overshoot. So what I wish to do is I have tried and made a small presentation uh, to share with you how we look at today's scenario. So I will uh, try and share that. And from there on, then I would. I hope uh, it is visible. Yes, it is visible, sir. Thank you. It says, starting slide says, the sudden emergence and rapid spread of a novel coronavirus now called COVID-19 makes human understand the power of an infectious disease. I really struggled to find out what could be easy. And I found something very appropriate with these words that uh, what we are understanding today is the power of an infectious disease. 
and it may not be saying it's the biggest learning for anyone in life today. They cannot be, in my opinion, anything more learning uh, than this, what we are going through. That way, what we're learning about this is, it is a kind of an invisible enemy. And it's a frightening time uh, globally. We are in the midst of a worldwide pandemic. Uh, with even entire countries shutting down all globally. And, uh, sorry, I'm just feeling this. Some of us are in areas that have already been affected by coronavirus. Others are bracing for what may come and all of us are watching the headlines and wondering what is going to happen next. But in spite of all this fear and all this happening around, it may not be wrong to say that it's mankind's spirit to fight and win against all odds. I think this is the spirit at the moment in front of us. If we may say it says hope beyond hope is what we are trying to do. And to do anything, the most important and probably the first step is social distancing. Although each one of us understands, and I don't wish to read all this, but it all explains in very dictionary terms what social distancing is. I would, in fact, read that this eventually leads to decreasing spread, uh, morbidity and mortality due to the disease. In this situation, there are certain adopted facts. Uh, health experts and government across the world have been advising people to practice social distancing to halt the spread of deadly coronavirus. In our country, India too, we are constantly being told to avoid physical contact and maintain a distance of at least one meter from others. Prime Minister Narendra Modi himself has talked about it repeatedly in his nationally televised address to the citizen so often. And this is where I brought the background to say that all that when we need to talk about this is how can we implement, adopt and measure this, this through technology. The social distancing aspect. I as a technical person uh, could probably put it in this perspective, the whole fear and how it's to be addressed from its first step and what probably the technology could play a role is, is this. There are different aspects coming out on technology today. Uh, I'm sure most of you come across uh, drones, artificial intelligence, robotics, telemedicines, and many more. Uh, looking at the today's topics, uh, I would focus on something uh, on drones, and uh, I would focus to what today's society is looking at, and I fully agree is Atmanirbharta, and that is made in India. Uh, uh, is what I would look at, uh, in my opinion, as what today uh, role could be played by drone, how is the potentials and how it can help. Everyone I'm sure knows what drone is, but it's important to still say what in simple terms a drone is. Uh, in technological terms, it's an unmanned aircraft. Essentially, a drone is a flying robot that can be remotely controlled or fly autonomously through software control flight plans in their embedded systems, working in conjunction with onboard sensors and GPS. I'm sure there are many other ways to explain something simple I could gather and I thought would explain. Now, what we are looking to do, how drones can help fight the coronavirus. Drones have helped in surveillance, public address in medical deliveries, have cut transit time, reduced the strain on health personnel and embedded contactless handovers, reducing the risk of infection. And I would say in coming days may even come on more areas. But from this statement, if we try and pick what is more from the point of we as professionals, as techies are look at it, is it helps in cutting the, the transit time, reducing the risk of infection. This is in summary, I would say. Applications areas, immediate, uh, practical, as per compliance, I would put it general surveillance, public address, aerial sanitization, medicine and sample transportation, 
and of course disaster management there can be many more before i go into them it is very important as a professional to share that these thoughts are based on certain important aspect which the industry should know uh, very importantly and that is equipment and service provider should be registered with director general cv aeration bgca uh, drones as per category of operation should be registered with bgca there is a term called npnt compliant no permission no take off it's like a registration number and technically it has been made practical in a way that if a drone which is not npnt client it will be monitored and uh, it could uh, it could it could be making a default on what the regulations are the operators need to be certified trained pilots and from an experienced professional uh, it is also advisable that spares and brave batteries are readily available because batteries today are the fuel and as we all know that aircraft flies with the fuel and the fuels are directly related to the distances because these are not fuels like what we have on a vehicle running on a road and you could get a filling station very close by or probably manage in other these are totally dependent on their own flu, fuel in the sky and in case of drones it is batteries although we keep hearing about there are now people who are looking at central filling stations even in the air or probably charging batteries and last important very important is uh, drones should be operated from a point of national security there are regulations there are fly zones uh, of course dgc ca explains the parameters on which it should operate but very important to know that those have to be complied with uh, having said this uh, let me try and share with you uh, these these some of these applications specifically with corona virus uh, on the ground reality how they can help uh, every drone has a built in camera and by default it does in surveillance but in case of corona i call it from more component of a aerial survey of the infected area so you are more focused to what you are looking at and you are able to pick up what could be of interest um, monitoring social distancing we all know how the regulations are now coming up and social distancing uh, is something very basic fundamental which would always be uh, in in front of the authorities uh, the, uh, these drones can help in monitoring those that social distancing uh, crowd gathering uh, with such a situation around uh, often crowd gathers for various reasons and again these surveillance aerial surveillance can help in monitoring crowd gathering healthcare teams are very vulnerable we have all heard about how things uh, are difficult for on the ground and they uh, have the, the challenge of making visits to these areas so they can these drones can help in monitoring the visit of health check healthcare teams vehicular traffic uh, especially many a time when some incident happens and, and uh, it need to be then observed and then probably reactions given uh, the lanes could be watched and traffic could be seen as what is exactly is the density and which could be the lanes through which it could move out a uh, very common word these uh, containment discipline at these uh, in these situations uh, where and we there are already many areas which are under containment uh, in in these five states we keep hearing which are very alarming uh, numbers today so these containment uh, disciplines could be probably more effectively uh, monitored when i say more effectively means the risk factor could probably be controlled by practically not sending the authority people as and when required but they could be through aerial surveillance a uh, lot of distribution public distributions occasionally or times regularly are being done uh, like we have been doing we have been uh, involved with one of the very religious uh, uh, ngo and i was surprised to see that in one day uh, they were distributing 
5 lakh 11,000 uh, food packets uh, cooked on the same day and through technology they were monitoring everything but one aspect of the whole distribution concept uh, was was the uh, drone monitoring. Uh, the, they have the option, the drones can have the options also for recording activity. Sometimes this may be essential and drones uh, equipments could be put in a way that the activities could be either recorded on board or it could be, if we have good connectivity, then they could be brought in back at the base station by connectivity and they can uh, either help in, 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 in understanding and uh, finalizing the response or they can be evidence also. So general surveillance is a very important aspect uh, through drones, we could achieve that. Uh, public addressing is another area practically seen today, uh, uh, very uh, effective. Uh, this could be done in specific area with high grade audio clarity. Uh, so specific areas uh, with specific activities, uh, public address can be done and they're pretty audio and uh, li live communications can be done through handphones so it's not limited to just uh, recorded messages but you could use your mobile handphone and you could you could uh, speak directly and have the flexibility of 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 instructing as what you see on ground and that way it becomes more effective rather than a recorded message and these have been trained and good quality drones uh, do not have hummings and they give very uh, seamless and high grade clarity. Uh, very important, how long can you talk? Uh, practically uh, tests have been done. We've done tests where good duration talks could be done. On an average, one could do for a 15 minute talk, uh, which appears to be a reasonably a good time. Uh, these could be done at good altitudes. Uh, the reason of actually expressing is because flying the drones also depends on how you know you get the clearance and most of the towns most of the colonies we have the trees around and many other structures sometimes buildings are there so one has to really navigate through them and sometimes doing that the uh, the public address concept should not get lost uh, so it has a range uh, i mean anything from 15 meter to 50 meters uh, good drones could handle uh, public address, which are very clear. In addition to uh, live communications, recorded messages can also be delivered. So sometimes uh, there are instructions which are which are standard, which has to be repeated, and uh, and the district headquarters have a feeling that these should be done periodically. So recorded messages can be sent. What is very important in these is that the fuel, which are, uh, you know, the batteries, I keep calling the batteries, uh, should be adequate because designing and, and having the concept is one, but uh, making it happen, battery plays a very important role because the batteries generate the power and the drones flying in sky uh, uh, is one aspect very important, which is, and the other equipment which is on board for transmission, for monitoring their locations and things. But when it comes to public address, there are additional equipment. So batteries need to be uh, there and spares should also be there. Next, uh, an important area in our experience has been aerial sanitization. And uh, uh, it helps in res uh, restricting infections as we all know even what we do manually hand sanitization it restricts so it doesn't allow to spread uh, it restricts community spread uh, it helps in uniform coverage of the area uh, as it is done in, in, in a, at the aerial level so it's much better to doing a local one although though both of them don't compete I will come to that at the last point but being done aerially, it gives a very uniform coverage. Uh, nobody would make a claim of a 100% coverage, but it gives a very uniform coverage. And no doubt it's a contact lens uh, activity. So that way, disinfection uh, is fully achieved. Uh, 
most objects it covers and it doesn't leave to only what you do locally so when you are doing it aerial it will cover most objects and it lasts long uh, although it depends on you know what volume you are distributing and at what pressure you are creating the mist to get distributed those are design aspects but practice have been done in the way that disinfection lasts long uh, and as i said uh, local sanitizations uh, both of them complement each other so that way it brings more strength into into the aspect of sanitization medicine and samples transportation is another area which we found uh, is practical and also in limited areas but uh, it, uh, maybe in future this would grow a lot because overall the drone concept itself is, is has been new and it's growing but in these applications i would say medicine and samples would go would grow and again uh, what we achieve we save time uh, we are referring to more what we have experienced and so we are not referring to uh, sending medicines anywhere uh, in the city or in the town and samples although technically it is possible but as i said then all throughout my my talk i am putting uh, importance on the fact that what is practical from that point of view i am referring to a local area where there is a let us say there is a colony or there is a compound and in that compound if we wish to move the, these samples and and also send medicines it have been very successful and it saves time it avoids infection because very little man handling is there and it maintains social peace this is a little bit of a psychological aspect in our experience we have seen and when there are not too many people crowding and they are making it conscious that they have come in basically to take samples and then they are carrying it walking and people are talking to them so you know those numbers get reduced and when they get reduced obviously it doesn't lead to an unnecessary concern as we had seen in some of the colonies in india that had happened uh it gives a lot, lot of social confidence uh, in the sense that when uh, such technology and equipment is being used uh, people get a uh, feel about the commitment of the authorities because uh, this way an individual gets an importance on the other hand uh, with due respect to say that in the old corona virus when it comes to treatment people have that feeling about it that when you go into the hospital you will be left on your own but this particular aspect doesn't let that because here practically samples are being carried and they are being transported using machinery a uh, high tech machinery if i use the local language so they feel confident very effective in local containment zones again same aspect what i said because they are literally for few places very uh, limited entry exit points are there and very limited movements are there and in that uh, you know if if we, if we have the option of moving these through the drones it helps uh, it reduces the requirement of paramedic staff because uh, here the staff is only involved in in in, in taking the sample and putting it on the drone but not literally practically carrying and that way the numbers don't increase it overall improves the recovery period uh, very much uh, one can very easily see saves times and and fast deliveries so results come fast now having said uh, these applications one of the other area and that too is to do with corona virus although the world looks to be different disaster management but i mean is disasters unfortunately if something goes wrong like very often we keep hearing in delhi uh, touch wood uh, uh, nothing goes wrong but about the earthquakes coming and if something like that goes or otherwise an accident happens then you know, the drones can play first and foremost it will help to get the true picture of the disaster straight to the authorities control room and they would be in a better position to evaluate and measure the risk and plan out uh, that way it allows a very effective response uh, helps to plan the approach route most disasters would re require responses and responses would mean moving uh, 
moving people and uh, moving machinery and uh, that has to go in in a way that uh, minimum time is taken and, and the routes are not uh, failures. Uh, you go straight up to the target, so they help. Uh, it establishes a direct link with the BS center. Uh, again, using equipment, uh, we can communicate, uh, in a, use these as, as stations from where the signals could be picked from the place where the disaster has happened and they could be boosted or link back to uh, to the base which probably uh, directly it would not have been possible uh, synergizes with public address yes uh, in the sense that once we get a true picture of the disaster and we know what exactly is happening public address wise very pinpointing specific instructions could be given and they have been found to be very effective uh, one of the most important aspect you would, uh, you would agree with me in any disaster is the person feeling very alone and victimized and getting a feel about, you know, that he would be on his own, uh, things like that. But if there's a public address and uh, these aspects are being covered in that, the victim gets a feel about he's being looked after. And that helps a lot because on one side, he might be... A, injured. On the other side, this increases his spirit. Uh, we've also come across areas where uh, if these things happen at night time or remote area, then some reasonable illumination could also be provided and it becomes very handy. Uh, these can assist other public health and safety agencies uh, in the sense that if a disaster, let us say, is a fire, major fire or an earthquake, then these drones could, as I explained above, could also help them in understanding and helping and sometime in responses also. Although still we have to come out uh, globally, these uh, there are drones available which are helping on firefighting. Maybe in India also some people might be offering, but still they are not very common. Uh, delivering emergency infrastructures and supply. Uh, sometime in disasters, specific uh, victim needs something and it's not that easy to get that in a given time period those can be bought in using the drones it's again a it's again a schematic view of what i was explaining that the link could be established and uh, that way the communication could be done to understand what is happening and to better and accordingly response could be given Having uh, shared with you these application areas, I would like to take a liberty to share a small video of one of our uh, drones, which we have flown in from a public address point of view. So I will drive, and after this, I have just two slides, and uh, that should be that should cover up my presentation. <laughs>
with this type of thoughts, with this type of experience, uh, we come across with techies where we notice uh, this sentence, what is the future of technology is drone technology. Uh, these are not any statements to make claim. These are just to show the confidence we see today being in this industry. And uh, I would also like to say that current epidemic made us raise our hands toward the sky for help and forgiveness. Drones came to our rescue. Thank you, Almighty God. Uh, thank you. Uh, I would say drones uh, can also be a, uh, called as a Corona warrior technology for human care. So this is what I wanted to share with you. I'm sure my if there are any stuff, I will answer. Otherwise, uh, these are my simple contact details in case any would like to. Thank you. We have the questions, sir, but uh, we'll ask those questions after the second speaker sure. makes his presentation, sir. And thank you for a very, very wonderful, clear-cut, application-driven, you know, presentation, sir. Thank you very much. Now I'll request Mr. Dilpreet to start his presentation. Very well explained, sir. Thank you so much. Hi, sir. Good evening. Uh, my, I think uh, video is not working. It's been turned off. No issue. No issue, Dilpreet. You can speak. Um, sir, uh, it says the video has been turned off by the host. So if I request, uh, can we turn it on from your end, I think. I'll just turn it on. Yeah. Dilpreet. Sorry. Yeah, please. Right. Hi, good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you. Uh, good, sir, thank you very much. Captain Jagi, Colonel Srivastava, thank you very much. Um, I would say that uh, Dhawan sir has almost covered everything. I'll tell you how I got involved using drones um, for COVID. Uh, we have been involved using drones right from the very start. We are actually a counter drone company. We end up uh, stopping drones or drone based threats uh, with a successful deployment for the prime minister for about 11 times. So we have different drones placed in different parts of the country as and when they travel. And I personally was in possession of four different company drones. And I'm sorry if, if anybody does have problems, I can change my language or I can talk in Hindi, please don't uh, hesitate to inter uh, interfere. No, continue, so, you're speaking well. Thank you, sir. So how it all started was, um, I myself had five company drones, right from the very smallest one to the thermal one. And uh, with the help of the group itself, uh, one of the group members put me in touch with additional commissioner of IT, Delhi police. Uh, we talked, I sent some videos and said, sir, we would like to help. He said, fine, uh, you go to you know, one of the police stations, meet the ACP and see what you can do. So I ended up going. That was my first encounter actually to see what fear of COVID is, how people are scared and what role the authorities are doing. Everybody who is in charge or who is on outside on the road right now, right from your cleaning workers to police, health workers, delivery people, it's not easy. It's not easy. Our first call was to fly in one of the, um, well, I, I, I'll, I'll uh, take names of the places. So our first job was to fly at Nizamuddin Markas. This was first time when, when uh, the extent of the COVID uh, spread was known publicly. I was supposed to be at that area seven o'clock in the morning with my, uh, you know, I had a DJI thermal drone, uh, it's a Mavic Duel. My pilot did not show up. I kept on calling him. I said, I need help. I need you guys to be here. 
ही सेड सर मैं तो नहीं आऊंगा मेरे को डर लगता है सो आई एंड फ्लाइंग इन दैट एरिया एंड टू माई एडवांटेज वॉट एडवांटेज आई हैड इट वॉज इट वॉज अ वेरी स्मॉल रोल एक्चुअली शो इट यू सो दिस इज वॉट आई फ्लू देर right it has a, a thermal camera and a regular camera and a speaker on top i'm sure a lot of people here know and what this gave me in advantage at that area was what you see here the thermal part now i put my hand in front of the drone uh it'll tell my temperature it'll actually tell, i don't know if you can see it but you see if it tells my temperature right i move my hand away so it comes in the front it will tell you my temperature our first day we ended up catching 11 people and not joking 11 people whose temperature differential was more and all we checked was their faces so the acp told us this is something that we can use so i would say 28th march till about 3 um, days ago we were flying every day and it was not an easy job how how i felt drones made a difference point number 1 visibility we we could see but the controls were in our hand you know this this little controller made me see the entire area 4 5 6 kilometers away with each and every per person that is walking outside it's pinpoint temperature now this is a variation of course it is it is a variation this is not like a super high power thermal camera this is an average thermal camera so it was a average temperature differential that we checked anybody that showed up a little higher of course we knew that this person needs to be checked so delhi police made teams for us they had three constables one health department person health department person was wearing a ppe he would go with us with a drone pilot some hot spots we did not step out of the car we were flying from inside the car we would show the monitor to the health guy saying sir iska temperature zyada hai then they would call the person of course with that uh, it's very easy i mean we we could make an announcement um i will actually decrease the volume but how how this little thing helped us is we could fly with a siren right regular flying to the side this this volume is sorry it's at 5% only and and i could live address people sorry i could say um aap log sab apne ghar ke andar chale jaiye something like that easy made life of the first responders very easy they could actually से कि साहब आप लोगों ने हमारा रिस्क कम कर दिया आई आई ऑब्वियसली एट दैट टाइम वॉज इन थिंकिंग सो वी फॉर्म टीम्स दैट वॉज फ्लाइंग सम पार्ट ऑफ डेली दिस नैरो स्ट्रीट्स तो आई चुक इन माई लिटल बेबी दिस लिटल थिंग इट फ्लू वेन वॉट इट डेड इट गिव डिटरेंस फिजिकल डिटरेंस टू पीपल दैट वर ट्राइंग टू ब्रेक द लॉकडाउन that something out there is keeping an eye on us we need to be careful second thing it added to the safety safety of everyone there was a reason that there were suspected cases in nizamuddin and not confirmed cases in the initial days because uh, they were they were uh, able to maintain that distance from suspected patients the thermal scan wherever we go nowadays any place we enter if at all you guys had a chance to go out i'm sure security people have had we scan people for their temperature that is the first point this flying object that i use three extra batteries flying for 2 hours straight night shift coming in for guards telling them are iska temperature zyada isko duty pe mat rakhiyega please keep the other person on duty so an added advantage of technology with you so thermal scan happen what interesting thing happened was regular patrolling i use the little small light this this comes with a little light also this is extremely high power uh, extremely extremely high power light that just goes on top where the speaker is night flying thermal and it gave the first responders an ability to check 
people in the dark, if anybody was hiding in the bushes, if anybody was trying to go for a walk. So Delhi police kept us saying, okay, sir, aap paise le lije. And we were like, sir, we are trying to help. We are not in here for business. We are doing this for the community. We're doing this for you. We're not charging anything. We just want you to be safe. We just want, you know, this, this actually to work. Now, here's the interesting part. Why drones were flown in a place like Delhi? Uh, for all those who don't know, and as Dhavan sir has pointed out, there are regulations, DGCA norms, NPNT compliance. None of those laws were followed because of the pandemic and police had no option but to fly drones in areas where they could not patrol easily. This is where drones made a difference. From there, the word spread around. Uh, another interesting thing that drones could do, if, uh, and I'll, I'll quote, this was not in Delhi, this was in Karnataka, uh, a rural area in Bangalore. A lot of people had barricaded their entire city with rickshaws, with their cars, and they had started their market inside. People were actually living their lives like a normal uh, everyday routine. They had the tailor shops open, they had the vegetable shops open. People were actually buying and selling. Everybody was out, nobody was practicing social distancing. They made a mockery of the lockdown. We flew the drone. We told the police, sir, this is what is happening. They sent in people, sent everybody back in, locked everything back down, came back out. One hour later, we were told to fly again. One hour later, people were out again. So they said, you need to be here every day. They need to be scared. They need to know that we are watching from up top. And that's where we deployed a full team. So yes, it did make a difference for COVID. What police had an advantage was the GPS stamping, exact location, pinpoint accuracy of this place that was happening. Second advantage they had was while we were flying, we just sent them a link, a very easy internet link through WhatsApp. Everybody clicked on that link and they were able to see what the pilot was seeing. So there was a control room in Delhi a control room in CMO uh, Karnataka. There was a control room in Ministry of Health. They were all able to see what the drone was relaying live telecast with the audio. And then the phone started ringing. My next um, phone that went in uh, was from CMO, uh, uh, this UP, I'm sorry. They said, you guys are able to do live uh, streaming. You guys are able to do GPS stamping. You guys are able to give us timestamps. This is exactly what we need. We need to buy 200 drones because we need a PA system, we need a light, we need a thermal scanner. And of course, because the feed was being monitored by everyone that was involved, right from the commissioner to the beat constable was able to see from a simple click that this is what is happening. And when they asked us, oh, can you provide us with the drones? And we would tell them, sir, we are technically a counter drone company. We have right now 12 drones that are doing surveillance. We were told uh, they need disinfectants. As Dhavan sir has clearly mentioned, our first project was in Bangalore. We used alcohol-based uh, sanitizer, very thin agricultural drones. We used agricultural drones. It could carry 14.8 kgs of payload. So an octocopter, it used used for vast fields, it went in, sprayed the sanitizer, and somebody called in saying, uh, this violates my religious freedoms and we had to stop uh, spraying the alcohol-based sanitizer. We had to switch to a soap-based solution later on, which wasn't as effective. And of course, there were challenges as Davan said had mentioned before. But, but what happened was, right from March 28 to April 10th, this caused a sensation where every police department, every state wanted to deploy drones for the aid of the police officer. Now, not until I had seen, I had not realized how tough it is for the security boys, how tough it is for the law enforcement people to convince people to listen to them. Because people in India were looking for a way out to, to break the lockdown, to spread out, whatever they could do. And when we actually ended up using drones for this situation, 
it changed the entire narrative where Ministry of Civil Aviation got involved. They said, fine, we will give you permissions. This is the need of the hour. You guys can fly. And they came up with something called the Garud, which is a government's uh, portal where you can register to fly. And since then, there has been a lot of flying taking place. State of Uttarakhand, one of the best states I have seen, they have something called the Information Technology Development Agency called the ITDA. They have deployed three drones per police station to give them round the clock day and night coverage. Night coverage because most of the people would try to step out at night thinking cops are tired. They've been standing all day. They will go home. We can go around. So I myself, right, being the vice president of the company to flying the drone uh, and helping what I could do in my capacity without, of course, any financial remuneration was a very satisfying thing that at least this technology is getting known. Everybody is able to make use, best use, I'm sorry, uh, of this technology that is available. Four, five kilometer, you know, uh, radius is what you are able to see in your monitor. Very easy, very easy. Indian companies, Indian manufacturers were really, really, given a big boost that this, this technology can finally take up. The NPNT issue, uh, which a lot of people have uh, faced and because the technology became redundant, is now being addressed with a very small device that is coming in that can go in any drone, very cheap, and any drone becomes NPNT compliant. So that part is being taken care of. I started getting phone calls from my security group because my background is all security saying they need drones for society surveillance. I have personally flown in my society in Gurgaon where uh, the security guy is the administration knew everybody was obeying. I have flown, like I said, uh, the smallest drone I have is this, which goes up to 100 feet. Then I flew the mini. I, we have uh, some custom made drones, which are our own company, which we strictly use for thermal. Um, there were some drones that we had never made public that fly on a very different frequency, not on 2.4 and 5.8. Uh, that was again for our work. And they have successfully given results in high resolution. And everybody said, yeah, please come on a rental model and let people of residents of our society know that this is something that can help us. I, I uh, whatever I could do in my, in my capacity, I did. After, like I said, up until three days ago, I was out and about. My team was out and about. Delhi, Haryana, uh, Uttarakhand, UP. Uh, I have done Karnataka. Uh, there was Telangana that we have done. All these places now know COVID is something that, you know, while, I'm sorry, uh, let me complete this. Sentence, but they know that COVID is something that is going to make a huge difference in everyone's life. But right at the onset, when the count was close to 1,100 people, when my first drone was deployed on the ground, everybody told me one straight thing. Sir, this is going to expand. Everybody needs to be careful. There is no way out. He goes, no matter how much surveillance we do, it is people who need to understand and you cannot force them to understand. So, so my whole out and about in this was drones became known, their capability became known. Uh, everybody knew day and night surveillance was possible, day and night monitoring was possible. Societies have started to buy uh, a very small, uh, you know, legally available drone so that they can do surveillance in their areas. So yes, this is something I would say is going to take off for sure in next eight months. Going on commercial perspective, uh, within about 11 days, almost 233 drones have been sold. In next eight months, there is a foreseeable demand because uh, security industry, healthcare workers, police, everybody knows how this is gonna make a difference. Now, this is what I had to say. All the technical points I think Bhavan sir has covered. Should there be any questions, I'd be very happy to take it. Uh, Dyagi sir, thank you very much. Uh, Shivasav sir, thank you very much for giving me an opportunity. I am done. Thank you. Thank you so much. In fact, 
when you were narrating, I was feeling as if I should keep hearing, hearing, hearing. So, yes, sir. Thank you so much. Wonderful, wonderful, and you know, enthralling experience. I'll say that's really well done. Thank you, sir. And uh, we have few questions. First, Indeed, we'll sir. take the questions, and uh, the question that comes uh, one is. Uh, First question has come for the Mr. Anil Dhawan. The question is, for the purpose of usage, what type of drones you recommend? Mr. Can Anil I, Dhawan, please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, can I, instead of typing out, can I speak out the answers? I think yes, I yes, should... yes, yes, you should speak out. Sir. You should start your video also, sir. I think uh, I would like to also thank uh, Mr. Paramdeep for a, for a very good and complimentary presentation. And I I I, I could read uh, the experience what he has achieved is marvelous. And, uh, I really congratulate him. And it's thank not you, sir. Easy, thank you so much, sir. It's not easy uh, to go and deliver in these difficult circumstances. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I think uh, on the uh, the question is on commercial, and I uh, I think the, for, I think question is first from the point of what type of drones. The drones are basically classified into different categories, and depending on the payload that they pick up. So you know, one need to understand the payload that they are into, and uh, they range right from anything from 200, 500 grams to uh, to a very high load they can carry. Uh, when it comes to applications to what drone has to be used, we have to understand what application we are trying to do it. So if we are trying to do for general surveillance only, probably we don't need uh, high payload drones. And when we are trying to do applications like public address uh, or you know, delivery of items, then these are with payloads. Payload is the in 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 very crude uh, wording it is the weight they carry so that has to, based on that the drone has to be uh, judged and uh, when you do that you have to also keep in mind as soon as you go into a category there are different categories named and then the dgca has a number of accordingly the regulations also so probably the lowest category which is i think is the nano category from there, you probably may not need a registration, but in that case, that application is not that big in that. But as soon as you move up, that is micro, small, and many others, uh, you you start completely qualifying for those registrations. I hope I'm able to explain. Absolutely. Yes, sir. I request Dilpreet also to take this question that what sort of commercial roles you recommend to... Um, Sir, to be honest with you, um, if somebody is looking at a cost perspective, uh, there are three different uh, companies that have drones that are less than 250 grams. Uh, very good drones. Uh, DJI, of course, is the market leader with the Mavic Mini. They're coming with a Mavic Air. They have Spark. These are all less than 250 grams that come under the nano category. They do not need any permissions or licensing. Uh, they can be flown with basically one day's tutorial on YouTube. Very good drones, 4K transmission. Uh, then there is Auto. There is Parrot. You got to be make. You got to got to keep this in mind that in India, they have divided the weight categories of the drone. Nano drones are exempt from almost 90% of the regulation. Uh, minus the airports, you cannot fly near the airports or defense installation. Other than that, you can fly them. Uh, it should uncontrolled airspace up to 200 meters. You can fly. Reason I'm saying this with confidence is, in fact, the first white paper where I had launched and Captain Tiagi was part of our uh, Donacharya Par series of event is we had launched a white paper. And that white paper had recommendations for the government for the policy. Until then, everything was police permissions. And then first draft came out. So yes, I am the person that had given quite a few inputs for the drone policy. And it, it did uh, work really well. Some of it was very strict, which now is going to be 
uh, changing because of the new joint secretary that has joined. He's very pro drones, so he's going to make a, a lot of uh, difference in this industry altogether. And this, uh, coming to the the money part of it, the smallest one like this is about eight thousand. Goes about hundred feet, uh, fifteen, ten minutes, eleven minutes flying time. Has guards. I fly this from my phone. I use this in the gullies, like small little tight gullies. Uh, it, uh, I think that the highest it can go, Mavic um, Mini, would be about forty to fifty thousand, depending from where you buy. However, you can get them for about thirty thousand also. Sir, thank you very much. There are some more questions about. Can I? About can I can yes, sir. Also, yes, can yes, I yes, just please. Add one aspect which probably is important. Uh, in the whole explanation uh, from the point of the people who are inquisitive to understand the cost and that point is this that drones are available it depends company to company models to model but in principle business model wise they are available in two categories one is an outright purchase the other is from a service point of view so we you, those who are looking from a point of using drones or probably going into the business this is very important to note that either drones are outrightly purchased then the categories are uh, and then every company has their models and, uh, and their cost or what we call as opex models opex models you can carry there are big tenders happening at the moment wherein the government is looking for drones in terms of Printing them out, and probably that model has a reason for it. The reason is this: that being a new technology, a new concept. When you go into OPEX, you automatically cover the performance also. You cover the maintenance also. You cover the uh, pilot uh, cost also. And sometimes, uh, you know, moving the drone from one location to the other location, there are local transportation. so both aspects have their own i would say advantages but this point should also be noted that drones when you buy drones uh, when you when you adopt drones you don't have to look only from a point that i have to go and buy it, it depends what suits you so there are models like our company we offer both the models we have a very very distinguished fighter pilot amongst us and a very seasoned air india pilot who has been flying with us uh, captain bala subramaniam he is uh, veer chakra of 71 war he i'll request here the question also and i'll request uh, bala sir please go ahead sir hello namaskar to all of you namaskar sir i have always felt that the advent of drones on the world scene has been as an important a milestone as powered flight itself if not more the talk today by our dhawan sir and mr delpreet just proves this amply very clear that this is here here to stay and corona or covid 19 has given us an opportunity to see what drones can do my question is looking at the size of our country and its population for an effective use of drone the numbers required will be very large what is the trend what is the movement what is the thought of the government or private parties to make it happen can i take it yes please i think it's a very relevant question um uh, uh as otherwise in the entire business environment the government is promoting the concept of atmanirbhar i think that's the answer in the sense of local drones it doesn't mean that i'm against the idea of foreign drones or imported drones or assembled drones but when i when, by this what i'm trying to answer what mr bala refer to if i understood correctly the size of the country is big the requirements would be big they also would be vivid 
in the sense that certain sector is asking for drones which are small certain is asking which are big so within that also we have somebody wants to buy somebody wants to rent out so it will be a very complex situation so probably having an in house in house capability i think uh, it would be more uh, correctly addressed uh, if these things could be and um, i'm sure most people would come in uh, into this and they are welcome because the market is big uh, and being person in the industry for almost 32 years one of my biggest learning has been that the more competition it is the better quality benchmarks there sure mm -hmm. and you yourself it's a privilege to to have somebody like you who's been honored sure. with the chakra sure. so i, I think uh, yeah, you know better, even better than us that uh, technology which is related today to 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 flying objects like drones or planes i mean there is nothing else which can count even cost will not count in my opinion what would count is the quality so if there would be competitions quality would always be the benchmark and today we all may look to be pretty staggered and you know someone known somebody not but i think in days to come this would become more uh, i would say more refined and clear and that's why this initiative of conducting such a webinar is a great initiative I, thank you sir those volumes would be addressed to him thank you sir thank you. thank you so much sir i'll request captain tyagi to oh, have his views and for the closing remarks sanjay first of all my jaint to captain balashankar sir not every day we meet uh, <laughs> someone so highly decorated thank you thank you and uh, yeah. our veteran when you were probably uh, flying the fighter aircraft i was standing by the railway line and uh, in my knickers i was saluting <laughs> for the planes passing by so it is really privilege and honor to have interaction with you sir thank you sir i am obliged yes thank <laughs> i almost became very sentimental uh dilpreet has mentioned you know one point uh, about dronacharya name was very fancy very appealing and it did uh, ground breaking uh, for novices like me to understand what actually drones are and uh, before that drones were generally uh, referred as uavs and uh, for beginner like me i thought that uh, drones are something which are very very different than uavs and uh, uavs are something which only uk uh, sorry usa flies and uh, we would be left with only small things called drones in such chain and uh, regularly i was having discussions with the uh, industry leaders those path breakers and two of them are uh, present in this webinar mr anil dhawan and dilpreet mr anil dhawan when he started his initiatives uh, and uh, mr jasveer basu he is not here uh, in the webinar and he very fondly remembered that time in facebook post that you know uh, he was taken by mr anil dhawan to uttarakhand and uh, that is how you know path breakers uh, uh, take initiative dilpreet has been uh, associated with dronacharya and i think uh, uh, whether uh, officially or not uh, in the organization where he was working for me he was uh, very clear in the concept in the understanding and the entire series of dronacharya and what went uh, through the white paper presented to government was uh, mostly hard work of dilpreet both the experts have when in past interacted with me and i tried to understand the technology and technicalities i always you know uh, very uh, frankly submitted to both of them that i come from non technical background and i have understanding about the logic about the you know uh, application but when you talk about technology and send the papers we don't you know security people we don't read you know much and a lot of documents if you share 
no one would even open those documents but here when you discuss and especially through your powerpoint presentation through your video through your actually you know showing even showing the drones on the screen makes us realize and relate the subject which is being discussed and uh, i can assure you that after this webinar there will be a video which will be shared through many platforms video recording social media to the security professionals we also would have you no know, extensive coverage through our uh, publication of international council of uh, industrial security and safety which is called secure it we secure it so in uh, we secure it of next month which is 15 days from hence there will be extensive coverage of deliberations which have gone through and uh, i have seen large number of audience and uh, they have asked few very intelligent questions if sanjay permits me i will ask two questions which can be if there is still time sanjay do i have your permission please please go ahead sir i have two questions one is both both the speakers can answer whichever way it suits one is that if drone mid flight is lost for some technical reasons maybe battery maybe certain you know interference uh, in communication how do you retrieve that uh, drone do you have technology to pinpoint the uh, through gps or whatever to pinpoint the loss of the drone and retrieve it that is one question second question is how do i become licensed pilot i have drone and i want to use those drones for which no permission is required but i suppose i still need a license and if not license at least i need training so these are two questions now and sir are you going first okay thank you i i i think uh, one of the very important uh, you know answering your question uh, i think one starting statement would be even though you say that you are not a technical person i think you have asked two questions which are very important uh, from anyone who is trying to today understand the drone industry and they are very technical and uh, i really appreciate these two questions the first one i i'll be very brief on them the first one is is that very simple that drone which looks to be so small drone which looks to be so simple and probably just having you know these rotors and 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 the cameras has a many equipments on it or you know these are equipments which which are from gprs point of view from gsm point of view which which keep so you know there are features when such a thing happens that in between the flight something goes wrong then you know uh, it has self battery powered gps systems which will help it back to come in and there are features which are programmed to bring it back home you know from where it had flown so very important aspect because uh, uh, because as the knowledge would increase uh, people would have these questions and i think it is not wrong to say somebody somewhere it this should have come and what it is is that actually the whole drone concept started from hobbies so you know many people still have a feel about it that these are only you know toys which you know uh, which are getting converted but yes they were toys at one time but today they are full fledged you know flying vehicles which have all the facility to navigate to 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 being controlled and to being uh, to being uh, safe in what they do so that is one uh, the second question you asked if i am right was you know to operate these still there would be some licensing required very simple go to the uh, dgfc uh, dgca site and it explains very well that in what category are you looking at and then you apply for it although these days unfortunately that site is 
is is not operating but i would imagine that's a temporary problem and you will get an acknowledgement based on how you comply with things and i think uh, with this question you also had one query about that you know to operate where do you really go and learn there are institutes which actually does does uh, trainings uh, and you can you can go and do trainings and you will get the certificate from them one of them if i am right is in noida which is, which is run by our friend you know yeah indian institute of drone uh, management uh, by mr livingstone a very well known figure in this industry so i hope uh, this is what in brief is uh, dilpreet can add more i'm sure sir um, without going into the confidential part of uh, yeah. what it is the jamming signal we we had actually flown a drone across the border and uh, it came back we were testing uh, right now i am proud to say this we have the capability to jam drones in plus kilometer range in a handheld portable unit the nearest competition this is indian by the way everything a to z 100% is indian the nearest competition is 1.5 to 1.7 kilometers on papers not on trial ours has been tested by signals by putting a, a, a signal receiver on the other end seeing how much power we were pumping in and everything so if the drone is programmed to rth which is returned to home it will return to home but when you block the rf and you block the gps say you're flying near rashtrapati bhavan and they have a system in place and you don't know it's accidental and suddenly your controls stop working your drone will keep on hovering in that place until the battery falls out or it drains up or it is made to land and of course then you will have repercussions in case in case and this has happened the battery fly, uh, falls down during flight you do have the flight path which is marked so you can obviously go and search for that in exact location these are very accurate flying areas yes so yeah you can retrieve that drone unless it gets flown away it's a small drone and and high cost of it takes it away with it. second part sir for the licensing in january ministry had come out with a voluntary disclosure which i did too for my drones which i personally own the little tiny ones and they gave a, a pan number and a oan number oan uh, owner operation uh, number they said we will offer online courses for nano and micro category of drones where you will fly the drone make a video upload it and do the exam online 15 20 minutes exam this is the proposal that is going to come up of course because of covid everything got delayed so yes sir you can be certified sitting at home if you know how to fly a drone online this is a ministry of civil aviation initiative like i said sir there are a lot of things that are changing now in future sir. things are going to change big times thank you dilpreet it's a pleasure sir uh, the one who started uh, on uh, approach how to uh, be ready against the drone now he is the man who is in favor of drones am i <laughs> right dilpreet uh, your initial stance was how to defend uh, yourself against the drones uh, absolutely now, now you are trying to defend the drones they change but uh, these are the changing times and uh, people keep on asking what would be the uh, present normal and what would be the future and uh, this discussion is you know one of the initiative in this direction and uh, i am sure that uh, coming times we are going to have more and more uh, discussion on drones uh, the name which has been mentioned about uh, people who initiated the original concept of using drones for security and safety purpose they must be very happy and uh, one of them are you know uh, two speakers present here you should be you know sleeping happy at least with the idea that what you started you know many years back is now yes, being uh, used for uh, very good purpose and the sanjay with this uh, i have nothing more to add besides saying thank you and uh, wishing all the success to everyone here sanjay over to you thank you very much sir 
very very enlightening session and uh, as an air defense officer only i can say that other than the flying of obj other objects we have more number of elements to detect track and defend the nation uh, and one thing one thing San sanjay i forgot to mention for the benefit of audience even sanjay shrivastava and i was wrong you know i was almost missing out even sanjay shrivastava is one of the pioneer to have uh, drones actually used many many years back and uh, he used this for uh, ground uh, monitoring okay by uh, 10 minutes okay? in large gathering he also used it for uh, so i mean office meeting disaster and uh, he himself is you know quite an uh, accomplished hand in uh, handling the drones so thank you sanjay over to you again thank you so much sir sitting in the northern command headquarters in 97 when we started of this and uh, uh, i cannot speak much on this because of being bound by the you know official yes. secret act but i can only see the way mr anil dhawan dhawan sir and dilpreet the way you have showcased its application is phenomenal thank and you, sir. Uh, one feels very happy and accomplished that the journey started way back is so well now taken and as tyagi sir has said and as bala sir has said this is this advent of drone itself is a you know revolution and it's going to revolutionize our new normals and it's going to facilitate business so that is a new delivery model which is being thought for even routine items so agriculture we already started off way back almost 9 uh, years back and uh, various exp you know such usage will come times will change and wish uh, good luck and good business to anil dhawan sir and uh, dilpreet and thank you captain tyagi sir for uh, giving this opportunity and thanks to all participants